the city was truly affected. The, the Mariner fans were affected, and uh, it made things rather gloomy in, in Seattle. Some people don't like the decisions that people make, but in the best interest of, of my family, I felt that Cincinnati was the place I thought I thought I would be happiest. When the word came out that Junior was coming back, this city lost its mind. The expectation level was, was through the roof. Oh, we're winning the World Series for sure. The Red Sox no are coming off wins in their, their previous year. three games. It was, it was an incredible feeling. Hello and welcome, everyone. Dwayne Kuyper joined by former Giants All-Star Mike Kruko for tonight's MVP baseball game with EA Sports. Tonight's American League game is between the Boston Red Sox and the Toronto Blue Jays. This guy's swing is a thing of beauty. And help this ball club win a championship. Griffey, the big story of the offseason, moving to the Reds, his first game with the Cincinnati Ball Club. He's come home. I didn't really understand the full magnitude of when he left Seattle and go back home until I became a professional and understood what it means to play in front of the game. The game is fans. underway. It's nothing like it. Here was Junior He's running out to center field on opening day it's short. at the same field that his dad had those great years in those world championships with the Cincinnati Reds in and the mid-70s. It was just so much fanfare, he and he did a pretty good swing with the ball. Swan, didn't care. Fly ball, deep right field. Junior has homered for the first time as a Red. So it began as a baseball fairy tale. Surrounded by friends and family, Jackson with his dad into as the his new team's box. bench coach, this Ken Griffey Jr. was exactly where he wanted to be. Back Griffey up the middle. Here has just hit his He's on his way to the plate. That's an RBI single. Hey, partner, nice base That's running right there to score from second on the single. This was home for him, and he was raised here in Cincinnati. That's the only team he wanted to play for was the Cincinnati Reds, and that's where he shined. Griffey with his second of the day. And again, they stand the and roll right for him here in Cincinnati. He's their new hero. And the pitch. There were plenty of familiar sights. Oh. Misses for a ball. Infield's got to think about and playing a double play depth right now. One on and one nobody out. In the game. Hernandez. And now so he was a hometown kid ball. for the fans to adore. How about this? Pitches ahead, back. one yes, and two. So he's got two years and two again. losses this season. In his first season in Cincinnati, Junior remained a familiar force at the plate with 40 homers and 118 RBI. Ortiz for is next. The Reds got to do this. Just too many left-handed hitters who enjoy the year, type of success there was this an guy has sign against right-handed trouble to come. Here's the throw. Junior they was two. the tag on him and he's out. Is Junior okay? Hold on a minute. Now he's looking, he's holding Heading into the bottom of the, of the first, the score is one to nothing. The hamstring is on the start for the visitors, for most of Oliver September Perez. 2000, and then linger in the 2001. He turned out to be the first in a string of injuries. Swung on and ground to the third. They got the run down. Right back and forth in the run down between third and home. Barrett takes it. Goes back to the Ruby. They get the other way out to right. And Griffey is makes the catch to down. Record the on to his a nice pitch there. Right he is. Nice That's in a pitch with Ruby. He went down, down and grabbed grab his knee, and my heart sunk. No one on, and we didn't want to come out. He didn't want to be on a disabled list. Probably the hardest thing he had to do was explain to him how serious this was and how he had to make this better or he could end his career right there. Junior makes he delivers a call strike. And he's still got four wins and three losses and so far. And here we go again. And on three pitches, he's gone. Three pitches, three strikes. That gets easier than that part. He was suddenly a superstar and couldn't stay on the field. 
Though it seemed every new season started to promise, it was almost inevitable when they got cut short. Junior, he's on a flat-out run, still going, can't get there! That'll clear up! Long Three fly ball to the right field indeed. Junior That'll go for the Blue Jays in the first inning. When Junior was with Seattle, after one inning, the, the score is one to nothing. Than Junior Griffin. Today's game is brought to you by EA Sports. EA Sports. It's in the game. You know, the, the, all that wear and tear takes a, a steady hitter. hitter. A toll on your body, and so by the time he missed the strike zone with a 100 mile You know, maybe it slowed down just a touch. And it's gone from bad to worse in Cincinnati. That's a lone strike. This started to take a little toll on Junior. And looked like Junior was limping as he went into second base. Now he's on his way out of this game. And uh, he's here with the Boopers. I don't know if some of the fans aren't buying it. He made a real good the disappointment the fans, three, the right? media. Um, Junior was a little great sensitive to that. All, with that. all the injuries strength. that he's had, the right. fans are really questioning whether he enjoys the type of physical this guy mental. has against right-handed pitching. He's been what you call effectively wild. I don't think people hitter has no clue where the pitch is going, which makes it sometimes tough to hit. You know, it's very hard for me to read in a paper or listening on the talk shows about Junior's job. He's not line. running 100. percent They didn't realize he it when he the injured out. these things. You he don't come back to 100. Well you can't, can't be the kid you were at age 23, 24, 25. Long, Long run for the base. Still going. Hawk is gone. It rolls to the wall. And a strike. He's two backs. He's heading for third. And he'll make it easily. Strokes this one into left field. In the Jr. That'll go for the Red Sox right in the pocket. second. Walking Heading into the bottom of the second. Toronto trails by one. Back in right center and the Reds trainers coming out. We have a lot of things. And we found out that the entire hamstring is made up of three big muscles. He's going back. Off the track. Off the wall. The wall. Off the wall. He's on his way to second. Huge He's Probably in there with a the triple. He played so hard. I remember doing a baseball Good tournament with ESPN, and, and one of the people that was on the show with me said, well, Griffey has to learn to not play that hard. My reaction was that he, that he shouldn't play, because he doesn't know how to play without playing really hard. Even through the setbacks, the march to major milestones continued. And in 2004 came one of his brightest moments in Cincinnati, a piece of history just about this everyone has seen coming since his first Southport. days in big leagues. All of the eyes are riveted to home plate right now. As Hitter's got to try and elevate that ball to the outfield. Nine career three. home runs. Here he is, pounding the plate with the head of the bat and waiting, and Morris delivered. And a high drive. Hit back into deep right field. Junior has just knocked the door down to the 500 club. A three-pitch strikeout. A high I think the pitcher wins the battle. The Sweet Jackson pitch right. to get the K. Number 30 touches them all. A standing ovation here at Bush Stadium. A packed house. They're on their feet, and they salute the future Hall of Famer. Boy, what a Father's Day gift for Seaton. Strike with a fastball. He if he can hit the ball deep to the outfield, they'll get a run. On Father's Day. What a special moment. It's the call for a strike. A he showed excellent it command of that pitch. A strike right on the edge of the zone. Amazing to watch your son do something like this. Was out of the zone, period. that's I a mean, ball. Just think. Sometimes you try to make a hit change your pitch. That's exactly years. what you saw. Right the LP, and that's the important thing, I think. That's what a lot of people have not that's seen in the last few years out. that he's been hurt. And, you know, they've been taking their frustrations out on him. But like I said, if he's healthy, he's still one of the better ball players in this league. Four years later came another landmark as Junior became just the sixth player to hit 600 home runs. In the end, the score is there were some highlights and some history. His run as the hometown MVP kid hardly baseball. ended up being Log the baseball fairy tale people were expecting. EA Sports, but it's junior, in the game. there were no regrets about the way it worked out. When you play sports, you know that injury is a part of the game. It's just the way it is. And if you play hard and it happens, he wanted the batter to go fishing on that one, and boy, did he ever! Oh well. Yeah, I've had 
two wrist surgeries, a hand surgery, ankle, three pitches, three strikes, and knee, your net and hamstring surgery, and in, shoulder Damon. surgery. But would I change the way he I play? That one way back no. And gone. Thank you for all being here. A very exciting day for this organization. Hey, Kipe, there are the Seattle Mariners are very proud and very happy to announce that we have come to an agreement with Ken Griffey Jr. You always wanted to you know, start and end your career with the same team. You know, not Dirk saying that makes his way to the play. this is the end of my career, um, but it's an opportunity for me to Misses with the fastball 100 to miles do what an I said hour. I was going to do, and this that's come back here. Deep in his game whenever he starts, you will not see him tire out very often. Ken Griffey Jr. was 39 years old when he came back to Seattle in 2009, setting up the storybook ending to his whole thing. Cutter for a strike on the inside corner at the knees. Here he is. Listen to the Two balls, two strikes. He came back. He wanted to finish his career when he started, and... He wanted Yank to give to back right side. to the city that supported him from day one. He's on with a single. Get his in. Recognize the standing ovation. Coming back to Seattle, it, it had to be two parts. One, they had to, they got to want you. And the second is, can you still perform? Are you ready for more? The catch lying in the right field. Yeah, this guy got flat out swept back. He's got a good situation going here. And I knew my role wasn't, you know, play one. every day. It was the to, appeal to, the to first mold base some of the younger guys. Nope. Big ovation, as you would expect here at Safeco Field. Continuing the pitch is taken out to right. In Mariner history. Puts it away for the out. Drive to right. Going back. He picked up ball right off the bat. Camp under for the easy out. The next batter is Mike Lowell. Certain iconic ready, really sports has figures a leave an impression on the game in which they play. From the day he put on that season. uniform and for the very him, first time to the day that he took it off, Junior played the game the right way. Gets the strike on the inside Playing the game the right way in Junior's era had a very particular meaning, he putting him in stark right. contrast to many of his rivals. Ken Griffey played the game the way it should be played, over 600 home runs, and doing the things that he did, and he did it all natural. You had a lot of players in the game that were using performance enhancing drugs. He did not, but I thoroughly believe it. And that's the way he was. And that's the he way he played. That's why people loved him. After I look two at and a half, the Red Sox he was the clean by two of that generation. And there's no doubt in my mind that he didn't cheat. That's important, I think, when you start picking up the legacy guys today. Pitching, Playing with Ken Griffey Jr. Result. every day. I recognized the greatness and appreciated it when it was he upon me. Seven bases. When it was all over, there were 630 home runs, 13 All-Star appearances, 10 Gold Gloves, they make and an impact play. on the game beyond what you can measure with numbers. I didn't play this game because of the money. I didn't do it for the fame. I did it because I loved baseball. That's it's a grounder down this the left side. This is my moment and I want it. I own it. Take on no competition in the ponies. He reaches for the one-out single. All-Star, a 10-time gold glove award. Davis steps into the batter's box. With him to go into Cooperstown, it's his rightful place. Put me in the Hall of Fame, going on a legend in the end. No doubt to pick a no brainer or first out. Hall of Fame is taking off right here. Singing for the fences like a heavyweight. And understand that time is precious, so we never wait. History made 99.3% for Ken Griffey Jr. Who are those three guys? Going back at the track. Oh, that's a home run. You want me to keep keep on it? Do that, Scott. Do that. 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 Do Hey, let's talk about Cooper's Town, what we're going to do in July. Get How's your speech going to the right Do you need some help with it? Got him. I could write a speech for you. Told y'all. Such. Up there. Do French on it. Do love it. We got to be David Whitney's this thing called life. Will Fine. you be nervous when you get there? I don't get nervous. No. I don't get nervous. It's taken for a ball. I got you, Dan. When you're prepared for something, you don't get nervous. It's like taking a test. If you study for a test, 
what you got to be nervous about. He swiped one base. Have I Are you about excited it? to go? Yes, but is speech. your speech going to be okay? I told you I'm going to start off with Prince. Are you going to write it down? Prince. Like, that's how you going to say it. Did you know he's not going to I'm going to write it down. I'm going to go for the blue um, kind of in the third inning. Okay. It's kind of like you're going to have to have any. You got to wing it. Now, how long is the speech going to be? Next up, David Ortiz. I think you have a timeline, right? Okay, I'm going to, let's see. All right, let's see. <clears throat> you get 12 to 15 minutes, so that's like three Ball print outside. songs. Oh, oh goodness. I'm going to start off with uh, uh, that's really that's a controversy. I like that. Who does introduce you? The commissioner of baseball. Oh. Fly ball, get the other way to left. First foul, George Kenneth Griffey Jr. Ken Jr. the kid. He hits it down the line. I would like to thank the Hall of Fame and their staff play for an unbelievable week here in Cooperstown. He puts it away. I'd like to thank the writers for Next writing the play. For Lance Berkman. Pitch taken for a ball. I got a couple of these somewhere. This guy the goes one down as one of the all-time greats. It's plain and simple. I'd now like to thank the Seattle Mariners organization for taking a chance on a 17-year-old kid and allowing him Swings to play this great game of baseball. Drive. To my dad. The ball is pulled to the right side. He's on first with a base hit. He taught me how to play this game, but more, more importantly, he taught me how to be a man. I used to tease him all the time. I tell him, I said, you have all the home runs, I got all the rings, but he has the big ring now. And I'm one of the proudest fathers there ever will be. <sighs> Trey Terrence Evans. They turn two. Words can't now, describe how much I, example that I love you picking you up. and would do anything for you. Double play right there. People don't know a lot about him, and um, I think the people that do After come in contact with him, half, it's tied at two good two. man and good husband, good father. Melissa, my wife, my best friend. The with no I love you. Just, he's always done it the right way, and that's his legacy. Perez legacy. Gets it out to right. Looking back, I got to do and the say things that have never been said. I got a chance to play with my dad. I got to yell at him and tell him You're to get a hit. The biggest thing is he always had a good time playing the game. I think that was probably more of his legacy than anything. Hitting the warehouse in Baltimore. Oh, oh, that may have hit the warehouse and they announce it did. It takes a lot of luck. You got a backwards hat. You got an unbelievable swing. I mean, the kid was a natural. The 95 series. They are going crazy. And a strike can go. When I look at Junior and I think about all the things that he did in this game of baseball, this may be the greatest player four strike ever on a baseball uniform. Okay, but I'm going to leave you with one thing. Swing. Out of my 22 years, I learned that one team will treat you the best, and that's your first team. I'm damn proud to be a Seattle Mariners. It's in its 0-1. There's just too many things that he did special day in and day out. There'll never be another King Griffey Jr. Period. I want to thank my family, my friends, the fans, the Reds, the White Sox, and the Mariners. Perez with a one, two, three. Making this kid dream come true. With five innings remaining, it's tied at 2 2. I don't worry about legacy. Bottom of I didn't the order try to be coming anybody, up. But me. You know, I didn't imitate anybody. I just wanted to be who I was. He offered at the pitch, I'm just kidding so for And nobody else. On the ground. Good start to the inning. The leadoff single. Hit that ball on the ground hard enough to get past the infield for a base hit. That ball was smoked. Popped up in foul territory. But he has room for a play.
Welcome to another edition of MLB Network Presents. It was billed as the eighth wonder of the world. Fifty years ago, in April of 1965, the Astrodome opened its doors to the public as the world's first multi-purpose domed sports stadium. Standing 18 stories tall and covering nine and a half acres, it hosted the Astros and the Oilers. College basketball's game of the century was played there. And so too was the Billie Jean King to share the battle of the Celtics tennis man. Stepping in, Johnny Damon. Evil Knievel. This left-handed batter is still looking to develop the consistency the against right-handed pitching. This legendary structure was the first in what became a long line of other dome sports stadiums. Tell you what, this guy's got an uncanny knack to pick a good pitch to steal on. He may be going but right here. Quite He's like batting 269 with two home runs and 13 RBIs. With two home runs and 13 RBIs. Lambeau or Churchill Downs. But 50 years after opening its doors, and more than a decade after Major League Baseball was last played there, it still lifts one to left. It's one of sports most iconic Yes, this is a fabulous new Hey, partner, that's not an easy play to make. Well done. Really, only the top because there are four stories uh, underneath it. Sure to get to go to the ball games with Daddy was a very big deal because my alone time with him was spent at baseball games because we were. This guy's a prime kid at the prime swept bag right here. And we would get too many rain checks because it rains a lot in Houston. So riding home Taken one night for a in ball. rain, I asked Daddy Sometimes why can't you try we to make play baseball chase your inside? That's exactly what you saw he right there. The freeway, and he tried to chase it down and left. He's headed to third. That's a double. Don't want to swing at balls all the time, but he turned that one into a double. And I'll tell you, as you pan around this great Astrodome, the Texans say everything in Texas is bigger than anything anywhere else. This time they say they've created the biggest thing of all. They call it the eighth wonder of the world. He's only equipment with the Taj Mahal. Okay, the guy Not standing in right field has his share of outfield assists. And here comes Look for the runner to stay at third and sit to right. I walked in my car. And the run run comes nice. home. That single drives in a pair. I did it. That was good base running right the there. Score for the second on the single. That signaling goes to the moon. And I looked at everything there, and it just was mind boggling. I felt like I had gone to another planet. Lowell is next up. It was the game of the century. Like That's some serious heat. 96 uh, mile an hour on the gun, but it misses for a ball. The That's how oh. far into the future it looked. People came from all over the world just to see That's this not a swing. He checked it in time. In the Texas and this is the perfect time for the hit and run. The count shows that the pitcher Before needs the to come across the plate. Before the of the Let's world what ever became a reality, Houston was just a big city in Texas, hopeful about the future. Used the count is full. The runner at first is off. That's the third out with one man left aboard. It was going to be the hub of the space age, but it wasn't yet. Score two, Houston that half wasn't inning. Destination city. There was no attraction that people could think of that they related to Houston. Well, one Texas attraction turn at that. that half was minor league baseball, which dated back to the 1880s. But by the 1950s, the city Takes wanted to pitch just off the plate. We had that to bring Major League Baseball to Houston. That's all we had. The beginning round, we can have more. Cooks and Cody became a team, and the two of them called on Ernie Bob Smith. He was called the rich man. But Smith wanted Judge Hawthorne because he was the judge's get things done guy. Smith put up the money, and the judge put up the brains. Brains were going Another to be critical two. to clear the Great obstacle pitch the standing in the way of getting you used and legitimately through. considered for a major league franchise. And the three 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 pitches, he's gone. Major baseball. We think of the major league baseball team ready to play. The first answers, the second answers, the third answers, really forgettable. This batter is no slouch when he bats against South Florida. Now the Astros are going to take the pitch just off the plate. He finds actually had experience with racial issues. He served as a Harris County judge and Houston mayor and acted to desegregate the city's public libraries and restrooms. Hoff Hines had very strong ties to the African American community. He was very active in promoting civil rights long before that was an accepted norm in this part of the country. Still, Houston's heat was a different kind of problem. 
and it was going to require some innovative thinking to overcome. Judge Hoffman had a model prepared with five of innings the played. The score is four to two. Because that was the lore. The and next batter the is David Hoffman Ortiz. Was, this is what it takes to become a big league city. But even Hard to if hit that kind of heat, 99 miles an hour for a franchise. Major League Baseball didn't seem to be in a rush. Deal to one pitch. George Cutts will be sad. Well, if Houston and the other city can want to Major League Baseball, we're going to have to take baseball by storm. So in July 1959, the four Hey, get strike one. Just keep flying away from the strikeout. Today, the birth of the Sacramento League. The five founding teams from New York, Toronto, at bat with a Africa, single, Lance Berkman. Met here in New York and announced the formation of this new league. The Continental League matter for the greatest bluff ever run in the history of professional sports. It forced the expansion of the major Just league. out of the fielder's reach. There's another single. They certainly will be in This guy looks Most like he's run out of gas on the hill. It's Hoffman time to start thinking about a moving bullpen. The proposal was a central reason why MLB chose Houston, which meant his next task was just as daunting. Mahal takes outside. Actually, hey, partner, if the pitcher can keep That's the ball low in the zone, he might be able to induce a ground ball to start, too. Two He would make a promise, and he would have to make the promise happen. When the Astrodome was first proposed, it was considered a dope, damn fool idea. Two and one, the count. It was seen as an impossible thing. They really thought that he was delusional. Two ball, two Not strike down. So, selling the idea to get the money to build the game was a huge political undertaking. He turns on one and hits a shot liner. People needed to pay for it out of their own pockets. The Blue and Jays have a right to throwing the bullpen. The bond this year was $35 million. The Denny Hansen community was number one, no matter what you tell us, I'm not so sure that this can be done. Number two, $35 million. It was exactly the kind of challenge he makes the cat say. There was a part of Roy Hoffman who was a PT part, but he was much more than that. Going into the bottom of the six, the score is four to two. The Astrodome campaign was just the latest act in a political the career. The order to start, start off the inning. Lyndon Johnson. Right now is where you see the manager here yeah. spin the butt or not the to butt. He's going for a butt base hit. Hoffman was really kind of a prodigy. He was a lawyer at 19. The Blue Jays are getting their bullpen ready. At the age of 21. He was elected Harris County judge at the age of 24. And he'd become the mayor of Houston before he was 40. He knew that's all the catcher. He knew of the African American community. So back then, he was mayor. He was the old man. He figures the folks to get the bond issue passed. Three pitches, three strikes. I think the assurance that the Astrodome will not be sending to the Hey, partner, this dude can fly. He feels happy the other the the bond issue the in January of 1961. And the groundbreaking for the Dome took place a year later in typical Texas style. The groundbreaking for the Dome. The home plate ump asked for help at first. Unique, we have 45 pistols. And at the signal, all of us shot into the ground. That was a great job. The counts one and, and two. The Colt 45s, meanwhile, began play in 1962 and played their first three seasons at Colt two, Stadium. Two-two count. Colt Stadium, it was hot. Game time temperature, 105 degrees. We came there during afternoon games, which were rare. But Rounded to the right side. He was unit, and it was crazy. He's on first for the base hit. Up next, the head of the sheriff. sheriff. All players and fans had to do was look on the game and get close to you at the miracle to come. And you now see this incredible okay, this dude does have to do that now. So great time to go. And you're playing in this outdoor so-called minor league stadium. Well, on the ground, cuts it off. Please, hurry up. For me, it was a great inspiration. Okay, this dude did not bring his A game in, but hey, it's fair to just play can't be on all the time. Hey, this guy just played it flat out fly. You better go right after him, because you don't want to put him on for free. Now, Anticipation was growing in the early 1960s as the Houston Astrodome was constructed. But with that There's excitement, a roller to there was also plenty of skepticism. Did the concept really work? The idea just seemed and to run scores. That's an RBI single. Yes, the air conditioned the whole thing. People expected them to fail. How are they going to take 
ball in this, one ball hit the roof. And then when they told us that the Shamrock Hilton could fit inside this place, you couldn't get your mind around it. But the imagination and the ambition of Judge Roy Hoffines never had. It's got a good situation to go on here. Let's see what happens. But he said he wanted was a stadium that would have a double. Ground ball hit the other way the to the right side. He just drove grass. He said he'd study the batter and he sure. He reaches with a single. They're making their own breaks in the faces today, Kai. That was some good base right there to go from first to third in the second. place to go look and see how somebody else did it. Hoffines treated every goal reached in the project as a landmark, including the topping of the dump. This is a tribute to the team. Well, this guy is a great against the team. He does on offense to the men on the job from American Bridge and the Iron Workers who have made it a reality. Okay, this dude just and knows how to steal the bag. He's been filmed, he's done pictures. Six months ahead of schedule, right a dream had been realized. That one's foul, but it looks like there's some room. The two men had also decided to change the club's name. Moving on from the past ball. to the future. They wanted to name what tied themselves to the station. They boiled it down to two names. It's either going to be Stiles or it's going to be Nashville. It's just more of a total position. <laughs> That's how it happens. Thus the game is here. Made. The Astrodome. And here's the delivery. The runner goes. goes. There's no question about that. And I think they get out number three with runner, runner stranded at the corner. Well, I think it's the one the world. Score one. That happened. So on April 9th, 1965, Next the Astrodome Manny was Ramirez. open for business. The electricity of opening night in the Astrodome was unequal and anything I've ever seen, known, or heard of. Baseball comes indoors this evening when the Astrodome opens its doors. President Lyndon Johnson is in attendance tonight as the moment sports fans across the world have been waiting for. I was in the purple section. One ball I was in the back row of the yellow section on the cheap seats. It was so magnificent and so huge, it was hard to take it all. On the, the ground, ground we found it arches foul. 208 feet above the playing field. An 18 story building could easily be fit inside. Sometimes you try to make a hit and chase your face. That's exactly what you saw right there. Let's find out once and for all if Up the middle. can hit the top of that zone. Let's begin with the young outfield star of the Houston Cubs. Good start to the inning. The leadoff single. Do you really think it can be good? Willing to give it a try for the fans? Sure. All right, let's see what Rusty Stout can do. Number one. Up next with a homer hey, already a in the game, Johnny Demon. At least 75 feet. No outs and a runner on and first. The ball is drilled to left. Another good belt, but again it leaves 75 feet. First foul. Rusty, do you give up? <laughs> Thanks a lot for time. The Astrodome had a ton and of And the batter went around. Pushing the the corners are playing the line. The brought to baseball. Look at padded seat. How many times do you get a padded That's seat? That's seven strikeouts. 6,600 tons of air conditioning. One on, one out. The world's largest score. Right, this would be a great time to lay one down. Four 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 tall. This scoreboard, if you swung through scoreboard, the pitch. Anybody that experienced that scoreboard knows exactly what I'm talking about. And there'd be the usherettes and their little space outfits. Busy space outfits. Grounded to the right side. Ability. Beautiful space outfits. Wow. Sandy Vesper. Shield in their space outfits. Everything is space. In fact, opening day against Philadelphia, 25 astronauts had the honor of throwing out the ceremonial first pitch. Everything that was involved had to be the biggest and the best. The Fly ball hit the deep left field. Makes the catch to record the out. It's time for the seventh inning stretch. the astronaut as flamboyant and as fabulous as he can be. Yeah, you know, half an inch in the middle stadium box. I remember seeing this model of an astronaut on the kitchen table. No Next up the play, the turn in well. Look, this looks like most This guy is so slow so when it comes to hitting left hand. He said, we're going to turn around and we're going to make them the best seats in the house. At the very top, the exclusive skyboxes. This is a look into one of the over 50 luxurious skyboxes on the ninth level. Boxes containing 24 to 30 seats. This guy Each represents the go-ahead run. With a different motive. 
And while the skyboxes may have been the most luxurious places ever built to watch a ball game, Judge Hoffines' own Astrodome apartment was even another step beyond. From the ninth level down to five additional levels, you'll find Swing. all the in a minute. Nothing in two. It slotted with right through the strikes, and the batter just couldn't touch it. Beauty parlor, barbershop, children's play area, and of course, a complete recreation area. Say, this might be how it was. The season down on strike. You must have been lost in that. Oh, God, tell me you've been here before. You get yourself into a two strike situation and chase anything? That Joe Pepitone proudly claimed to be the first Italian to make an error. Joe Pepitone is on the Yankees team that faced the Astros in a preseason game that opened the game. And the first home run will come off the bat of a legend. Taken for a ball. He's batting 323 with seven long balls and 25 RBIs. All eyes were on us. It had to go. Turns on it and hits it on the line. He's on first yeah, with a base hit. Yeah, for his game. And I find that ball is back and forth. No chance to get caught. An unforeseen problem. Or this would be a great time to live with a ball. Manager of the Houston Giants. Tries to get the ball, but missed. That's a strike. Batter could not lay out the corner strike. Nice fastball there. New Dome Stadium out in the daytime. The sun was out. He swung four bases. The Astros front office staff is dying baseball. Black, blue, green, yellow. No swing. You can imagine. Even the batter knew he got away with the swing. Very baseball would be easier to see. We tried to call a ball out this morning. Hit hard to the third baseman. Nice concentration at second base. The number was all over him, but the second baseman made a terrific turn to get the double play. It wasn't for a few days. With two innings left, the Red Sox lead by one. But then so was the grass. Bringing in the righty right here is a good move because right-handed hitters can have trouble picking up his breaking pitches. Artificial surface. At first, it was called chem grass. But once it was installed in the dome, AstroTurf was clearly the perfect term for the latest novelty in Houston. And baseball wouldn't be the only sport in town to use AstroTurf. Three years after the dome opened, the Oilers began playing football there. And by the late 1970s, with Earl Campbell as their star, the Oilers were a central attraction in the dome. He turns the corner, he caught the edge, and he got a good block downfield. He gained, I think, 199 yards that night. Howard Cosell, years after the fact, said that, that was the best Monday night game in the history of Monday night football. Out of the zone, that's a ball. Waving those pom poms on Monday night football, that made Houston special. There was a Pitch energy misses. like this town had never, ever seen. And from that game, the Astrodome became the home of a love affair Pitch between misses the city and its football team. The whole Love Your Blue era with Don Phillips so fit the community. The fans of Unified River, they weren't blue-piece suits, people. We were blue-collar workers. We, we kind of represented the, the city. The full. He's hitting 258 with three home like, runs and 14 runs, runs batted in. Everybody wants a to be liner. Used. In the beginning, the Astrodome's biggest asset was Base a to lead off the inning. But eventually, Roy yeah, Hoffines had Stepping to Stepping in, David Ortiz. That was always on that bad line. It was estimated that they needed to have just got a piece of that one. events in there a year just to break even. In fact, a great deal of his time and effort had nothing to do with sports. It had to do with filling the days in this building. Even with the Astros and later the Orioles, the pit. Roy Hoffines knew the dome had three to be more than just a home for three, three pitches, balls. three strikes, then getting easier next time. This is not just a baseball stadium. This was a multi-purpose building. Stepping so in, two for three, Lance there were Berkman. Other possibilities. You can't talk about the dome without the live talk show and radio. And so many people's memories are of that. The annual demolition derby. And thrill show. The thrill show might have a major character like Rounder pulled to the right side. Got him, and that's a double play. Got that double play smooth, so just like the press. Big one. Hello, the bottom. Anything that they could bring in. Going into the bottom of the eighth. The score is four to three. Did they have indoor chariot racing game place outside? And the, the one, two, three hitters are up next. The manager needs to be thinking about defending against the bunt right here. Who matches? 
We had conventions in here. They're we making a pitching change. In here that here comes a new pitcher. In there for all we know. I was there for the Republican National Convention. I wanted the convention to be in my home city, and no better place to hold it than the Astrodome. Do you know the people that came through here? Lyndon Johnson helped us open it. I saw the Rolling Stones there. Mm -hmm. I saw Paul McCartney there. Frank Davis was with here. a blast oh, deep to left. Berkman should have no problem. Elvis Presley. He's got it for the out. WWE sold more tickets for Ashley in the 17th. Hey, this dude is flying. He feels kind of be on their toe and to root for the bucket. It button. was a bucket list day because we were in the Ashley If you took all of those events that happened in the Ashley President Johnson comes to Houston to hear No chance to get that one way out of here. You had a venue for half the car. He knew that one was gone the second he hit it. Along what a shot. There was also a mainstream history made under the game. The heavyweight championship fight, Muhammad Ali being in there. Spectators are be born to go in to witness the famed Ali Shepard. The, the next batter is Mark Teixeira. The fight stops in the third round. Here comes the first pitch in the at bat. That's a ground ball life. hit to the second the baseman. Also provided a the Blue Jays are warming now. some relievers in the bullpen. People were fascinated by that roof shot. The camera was up at the top, no, looking no, down. You couldn't look that many the building because they didn't have work. In the 60s, Holly no one on and two out. Was huge. He's going in back in the track. The the wall, also over the shoulder, what a catch. With one inning remaining, it's a 4-4 tie. On January the Blue Jays 20th, call for a reliever. They're going to More than 52,000 fans were in the Astrodome. People were everywhere. It was like, wow. And millions more watched the game on national television. It all comes down to this, the, the final Pumas inning. Played host to John Wooden's UCLA Bruins. It changed the whole world. It was the first time that either a get the professional bell. or college game was televised in the prime time. Yeah. UCLA and Houston is going to be on TV. I can watch Hit the center it field. Online. That was the launching pad for the interest that we now have. And he puts it away for the out. It was of national attention because of the long UCLA winning streak. They've won 47 in a row, and they did seem invincible. The Bruins were led by maybe the best college player ever. At center, number 33, 7 feet, 1 and a half inches. There's a swing and a miss. He went around too soon. And that was because Houston also had a future Hall of Famer. All American, 6'8 senior, Elvin Hayes. No swing. God, I'm glad I didn't have to make the call on that check swing. It was real close. Now he goes up to the 17 game win. He sometimes you make a good pitch. And, a and that was one of the big strikes that came known as Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Up next, Manny Ramirez. I said, I'm going to take it. And the pitch. And, I'm going to and it's Elvin grounded Hayes up the middle. The battle of the unbeatens here at the Astrodome. Another single. UCLA, a coming through a place like that can often be the difference between a win and a loss. That was a big time hit. Inside out center, Bake goes up, blocked by Hayes. 944 remaining in the half. It's Hayes over out center, 17 footer, gone. Swings and misses. It was a game of a lifetime. Looking for Hayes. It's hit up the middle. The game stayed He's tight rounding throughout. second. But the last two of Hayes' 39 points made the difference, cementing the game of the century into sports lore. And the side is retired. The score is tied. If the Dome made a college basketball game feel big, five years later, the venue had the same impact on an historic tennis match. Live, Cody takes inside and low. He's batting 295 with six long balls and 21 RBI. They got him! The Blue Jays have two righties working in the bullpen. It's hugely important to it because it was massive, eighth oh, wonder of the world. So it was happening with bigger than mine. A wild game. The base is empty with one out. Big fans here, the chance and cheerleaders in all of the rest. Everyone can remember where they were that day through all. The Battle of the Sexes featured 55 year old Bobby Riggs. He was one of my heroes, and I got this news number one player in the world. But he 
who is also known for a less than progressive outlook. Well, okay, but that nice pitcher and catcher have a strategy in mind. So a lot of batters are taking these pitches. Which a man who's going to be in big fun. And so 29-year-old yeah, Billie Jean King, the top woman in the world, has stepped up to shut up Riggs. Title nine is passed June 23rd, 1972. That one's hit foul, but there's some room to make a play. And the women's movement was at its height. So I knew, for me personally, that that match was about social change. It wasn't about sports. And here comes Billy Jean King. And now it's a good count. He swiped one base. White is out on strike. So sweet. Just hey, partner, a steal yes. turn from hockey. This strikeout was no hat trick for that guy. Next up, Vernon Wells. Two outs and nobody on. Ball misses away. Get to the right side. He's on with a two-out single. That is tough hit right here. It's inside the outfield. No balls in one spot. Carter, this one is excellent. He really pitches and he delivers. The winner of the battle of the sex, Billy Jean King, by scores of 6-4. 6-3, Every day since that match, September 20th, 1973. Coming up, the hometown boy returns to shine underneath the dome. Takes a look in the back of the Looks like pitcher and catcher have a strategy in mind. So far, the batters are taking these pitches. Throughout the 60s and 70s, the Astrodome hosted a new sports and new family event in San but the dome had been He's built with a base of the Astros. A ball he had been run by his own position. It's easy to forget about. Those got it. It's a tough year. Nobody likes the team. Nobody likes the stadium. They were definitely a thought that the judge was more proud of the building than the team. There were some players who rose to start in Houston, like the man they called the toy camp, Jimmy Wynn. That has got to be the longest home run. Rusty Stop. And, and he hits it for the All Star teams as Astros. As did Larry Durk. Hold the first 20 game winner. It was also gold glover Doug Raider and the often electric Cesar Sedania. But great talent in the field and at the plate will only get you so far at the Astrodome. To win inside the eighth wonder of the world, it was all about pitching. One and two. If you were a come. pitcher, you couldn't wait to get on the Take call. Slow. If you were a hitter, say, so what the heck am I going to do? The punch is for halfway to full line. And there's our 340 down in the back. Pretty mighty. The pitcher and pitcher have a strategy in mind. So far, the batters are taking these points. Both runners are off with the pitch. Yeah. Astros pitchers would eventually throw six no hitters at home. The first from Don Wilson. After nine innings, it's a 4 4 tie. All right, partner. This dude isn't built to throw more than one inning a game. Let's we'll see how he manages this challenge. No hitters was a hometown kid who signed with the team in 1979. I was a Coke 45 Houston Astro fan, so I always wanted to play at home and thinking that. Pitch in the dome, and that'd be your home stadium. Certainly was attractive to me. It was just real exciting when he came to the Astros. I went down to the dome just to watch him warm up. It was so loud, I could hear the ball traveling through the air. It was a close and pitch called the ball. The admit that He's loud batting 316 with seven home runs, especially 25 RBI. You hear that grunt? Kind of threw me back a little bit to see somebody throw the ball that hard. Ryan had already thrown four no hitters when he got to Houston. And in the dome, the fifth only seemed Fast like a matter of strike. And a strike. They checked with the first base on the with the addition of Nolan Ryan. They did get some playoffs and they won their first division title that year. And in the playoffs against the Phillies, the Astros would be led by Ryan and 20 game winner Joe Meekly. The split. Stepping in one for four, Mike Lowe. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Astrodome. The Pitch inside. 
Dallas Green said he could not concentrate very well because there was so much noise in this ball. He pulls a ground ball to the left side. Negro decides retired in order. Throwing 10 shut out. In extra innings, it's a 4-4 tie. Plus standing on their feet here at the Astrodome. The top of the order is up next. The third baseman can determine whether or not this guy tries to punch or hit. He plays back, he could lay one down. And this is a good move, Kai, because right-handed hitters have some trouble picking up off-speed pitches from right-handed pitchers. We had a two game to one lead and uh, lost games four and five, heartbreaking fashion. We had a five to two lead and on top of the eighth in game five. With the pitches hit the down the line. We were in the dugout going. It's hit out to center. To the way this series has gone, you can expect David makes the uh, grab for up. the out. Fully scored five to go up. Hey, this guy can bring a defense on the drop down the front. He can fly. No swing. He went around to the upfield he did. Swung fast and went between Taken for a ball. He swiped four bases. And of course, he went the wrong way. The only time in my career, 25 men were crying. It was uh, a liner. The center fielder was running. 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 Reflected there. But he really thought we were going to And the minds of most baseball people. He's on his way to third. He's on his way to third. Well, and he's safe seven, just man. ahead of the throw. After their playoff appearance in 1980, the skipper has pulled the infield in. Next up to play, the mark of the sheriff still sights to be the pole. The manager is going to buy his bullpen some time with this mound visit. That mound visit may have gotten the pitcher's head part. Let's see if he can pull it together. The Red Sox turn it over to the pen. The manager they goes with the right season in 1985. The Astros in 1986 were not expected to win anything. We were picked to finish last, and we had a rookie manager, Hal Lanier. The Astros in 1986, they were still a collection of some of the best. Teixeira watches ball one. Big fly balls to turn up the score. Glenn Davis. Oh, yeah! The ball is hit up the middle. And they have the most solid pitching in the franchise. The game-winning run comes home. Was still anchoring that. Uh, Mike Scott had come into his own. Scott was dominant. The Toronto Blue Jays win it by one. The ERA and strikeouts, and saving his best for a day in the Astrodome no one will ever forget. I remember the date. I remember the time. It's September 25th, 1986. Astros Giants. That's one that will live in my memory for this place forever. And yet there were even more thrills ahead with the playoffs beginning. It was noisy, it was loud, it was just excitement everywhere. And Mike Scott was right at the epicenter of everything. Scott's biggest weapon was his all but unhittable split-fingered fastball, which had the Mets searching for answers. We felt like we have an advantage over the Mets because the Mets don't want to face Mike Scott. After his game one masterpiece, Scott returned in game four at Shea Stadium, looking to even the series at two. It was such great theater, and, and the stakes were so high for the Mets. The Mets were the team that were supposed to win, and they're fighting for their lives. The bottom dropped out of him. Gary Carter just couldn't hit him. He was totally in Gary's head. He was defeated before he got to the plate. That ball is hit high in the air to center field for Billy Hatcher. This should do it. Mike Scott has beaten the New York Mets for the second time. The Mets won game five, but there was still a sense they had their backs up against the wall for game six, because if the Astros won it, Scott would return for game seven. The Mets didn't want anything to do 
with Mike Scott if we'd have had to play the next day. And with that desperation as the backdrop, one of the most unforgettable games in baseball history unfolded. There's even a book written about it called The Greatest Game Ever Played, and it was a fabulous game. It may have been the loudest crowd in the history of the Astrodome. And they only got louder when Phil Gardner doubled home Billy Hatcher to open the scoring in the first. The early three-run cushion gave Bob Nepper plenty of room to work with. He has been absolutely masterful. In the ninth inning, it was still 3-0, and the Mets scored three runs to tie the ball game. Here comes Hernandez from third. The game is tied. In extra innings, the tension only grew. And then the Mets pulled ahead in the top of the 14th. 4-3, Mets. Full count to Hatcher. High in the air, toward the corner. Irving, it is home run! Billy Hatcher gets a home run that is fair by less than a foot. A 4-4 four, four tie at the bottom of the 14th inning. No question it was an exciting moment, and it was one of the great moments in Astro history. And that place went crazy. It just went wild. But the euphoria wouldn't last long, as the Mets took a three-run lead in the 16th inning. With two out, a tying run at second base. It went down to the last out, and we were looking to play game number seven. The winning run at first base. Three, two to Bass. Struck him out! You don't even think about the season being over. And then next thing you know, boom, strike three, and you know, hey, we can pack our bags and drive home today. It was tough. We played them really well, but just quite couldn't get by them. It was another very frustrating loss to lose that series and end up going home again, not getting in the World Series. The disappointment of 86 would linger when the Astros quickly returned to mediocrity. But in 1988, Craig Biggio's arrival gave the team a new young star. If it stays playable, and what a great grab by Biggio! Jeff Bagwell joined him three years later. Bagwell will not quite scrape the paint off the top of the dome. The pair would become the collective face of the Astros franchise, the most popular players for a team fans were hoping would rise again at the Astrodome. The three years before I started managing, 94, 95, and 96, the team finished second. My first year, we won the division. The second year, we won 102 games and set a record that still stands. And the next year, we won 97 games. So the last three years of the Astrodome for baseball were glory years. But as a stadium, the Astrodome was finished. The first big dagger came when the Oilers moved to Nashville in 1996 leaving the Astros behind as the Dome's only regular tenant. Football, even though it was only eight games a year, was still bringing in a fair amount of revenue, and not to have that second tenant was a big negative. Three years later, time also ran out on the Astros, and on October 3rd, 1999, they played their last regular season game under the Dome. The final regular season game in the Astrodome was one of the top memories, even for long timers like Larry Durker, who had been there since the beginning. That was a memory that is just as vivid for me now as it was the next day after it happened. 35 years of Major League Baseball in this building. There's a strikeout for him. And a final regular season game in the history of the Astrodome has come to a close with the Astros celebrating their third straight Central Division title. The confetti dropping down and just listen to that stadium rocking, you know, it was, it was, that was probably one of the best memories that I have, 97, 98, 99, and, and having that house being filled every night. By 2002, the Astros were three years removed from the Astrodome. That same year, Reliant Stadium opened. It was built in the Astrodome's parking lot. A state-of-the-art, yes, indoor stadium to host the NFL's Houston Texans. And when the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo moved there the next year, the Dome no longer had a full-time tenant. You look from the outside and you see it kind of dwarfed by Reliant Stadium. I feel saddened by the fact that they put Reliant Stadium so close and it kind of looks like that ugly stepsister now. Kind of like an older athlete that had his glory days 
back then and now he's got a few aches and pains, but somewhere inside of him, you can still see that the greatness was there. But there would be one more remarkable return to the spotlight for the dome in the fall of 2005, when it became a refuge for an unprecedented tragedy. When Katrina hit, uh, no one expected the devastation that occurred. And we welcomed 25,000 Katrina evacuees into the Astrodome. I was very proud of our city for doing that, and I was proud of the Astrodome for hosting it. It was one of the most incredible scenes I've ever seen. People sleeping on cots on the floor, and you couldn't even see the floor. There was a saying that the Houston Sports Association had about the Astrodome, and it was, the Astrodome is more than a stadium, it's a way of treating people. If the last thing that's at the Astrodome was helping thousands and thousands of people from Louisiana, then truthfully, I can't think of a better way for the dome to go out. In 2008, sitting empty and in disrepair, with numerous building code violations, the Astrodome was finally, officially closed. And the discussion over its future has continued ever since. To see the dome today, I prefer to remember it the way it was. It was magnificent, which is why it's so hard to come to terms with the fact that this building now sits empty. We need to come up with a plan that saves the icon for the community. The other school of thought is, it's time to cut our losses and move on. I love to hear every possible idea of how to save the dome. People that had ideas for movie studios, indoor ski jumping. One person wanted to fill it with water like uh, they used to do in a Roman Coliseum and have, you know, battleships go at it. Even if you go in and say we're going to tear it down, $88 million just to take it down. The dome's future, if it has one, is a complicated issue with opinions split between those in Houston who want it torn down and others, many with a personal connection, like myself, want it repurposed. I would like to see them be able to keep the Astrodome and find a functional use for it because it is a big part of our history. It's something that goes with the identity of the state of Texas, along with the Alamo. Part of Houston history, part of Texas history, an important part of American history, and I don't think it's too far a stretch to say, is part of world history. And I lament the fact that there's even a fleeting thought to tearing it down. That's why this Astrodome has to remain. It has to become a historic monument, and it has to be put to a fine purpose. Happy birthday to you. 50 years to the day after its opening, a rally was held in Houston to support repurposing the dome. The party included a cake, former stars from both Oilers and Astros history, and 25,000 fans who lined up for one last look at the eighth wonder of the world. Look at the amount of people that showed up to try to just go walk inside one more time. And I think that people that ridicule that kind of emotional attachment, I'm sorry that they don't get it. It's still a beautiful place. And I told myself that anything happened to the dome, I'm gonna tie myself to it. And if you have to kill the dome, you're gonna have to take me with it. I don't think the Astrodome has gotten the respect that it deserves because what it meant to professional sports and sports in general. The dome gave life to dome stadiums, retractable roof stadiums, everything we see out there now. The fact is it was Roy Alphonse and the Astrodome that gave birth to everything else. He was a huge and important figure, one that we will never see the likes of again, I think it's fair to say. And I can guarantee you that my dad's spirit hovers out here behind us. I can smell his cigars. I really can. It definitely is a living, breathing soul. And it would be pretty devastating to do anything less than to make it live.
There are all kinds of stuff that's going to break loose here in Cincinnati in this ballpark and around town. A one-two pitch. There's a drive in deep to right, way back, way back. It is a two-ball game. Big man Foster at third. They had him there with one out. Now they're two down. Here's the one-one pitch. Into the game. Here comes the center when he runs. He runs with the center. Cincinnati has... The action was equally heated in the American League play.